Hi, my name is Pete Gerlach. I've been a professional family systems therapist for 31 years, and I've been wandering around the planet for 73 years. I want to offer you a challenge in this video. I want to encourage you to take a look at yourself and see what you know about your personality. Before you do, uh, to make this more useful, I invite you first to see this video on something called grown wounded children. These are people whose personalities were damaged in their early childhood. Part of the quiz I'm about to offer you uh, refers to what you'll see in this video. So pause this video, look at the other video, which is about 12 minutes I think, and then come back here and resume. Welcome back. Um, as part of my preparation for and practice of family therapy, I've studied human development and interpersonal behavior and relationships for decades. Part of what I've come to believe is that there is widespread ignorance about the fundamental thing that controls your life, meaning your personality and everybody else's personality. There's fundamental ignorance about that. I was ignorant when I began this process. So lesson one in my nonprofit educational website is all about personalities and how they become damaged by early childhood trauma, meaning parental neglect, parental abuse, and parental abandonment. Those traumas for a young child um, have a profound effect on how their personality develops and unless there is very informed help, um, by the time they become grown-ups, they have a damaged personality that affects their relationships, their occupation, their health, and their lives. My point here is I propose it's vital, especially for parents and grandparents and anybody that is putting in significant time raising young children, it is vital to understand some fundamental things about personalities and how they can be damaged. So that's the purpose of this quiz. What I'm about to do is read you a set of questions from a quiz which is a web page in lesson one in my website. I'm going to try and minimize any commentary. I'm just going to provide the questions. You have several ways of using this video. Uh, one, you can view the whole thing. Don't try and answer any questions, but get a sense of all of them. And then at the end, decide if you want to go back and go through it more slowly and try to answer selected questions or all questions by pausing this video, answering out loud, and then resuming. You can also go through the whole video, answering them or not, answering questions or not, and then go to the printed version of this quiz. I'll give you the link at the end of this video and use the printed version in a way that suits you best. So you have several options here. Please keep in mind the purpose of this video is to raise your awareness of what you don't know you need to know. See, use this as a test. Test my theory that your ancestors, including your parents and grandparents, and your school teachers of all levels did not know this information and or they did not teach it to you. Um, also test my theory that if you're a parent or intend to be, you really need to know this. Your kids need you to know this information. Okay, ready? Here is the quiz. Define effective parenting. Question two, describe the difference between a grown wounded child and a grown nurtured child. Question three, define parental neglect and describe specifically how it may affect a young child's emerging personality. Question four, 
define parental abandonment and describe specifically how it may affect a young child's emerging personality. Question six, sorry, five. Define, uh, define child abuse and describe specifically how that may affect a young child's emerging personality. Six, name at least 15 traits of a high nurturance or functional family. That's the type of family you'd like your children to grow up in and you, one that you wish you had. Seven, explain what a human personality is and how it's formed. Eight, explain or describe personality subselves, where they come from, and what they all try to do. Nine, explain why personality subselves cannot be killed or fired or exiled or deleted. Explain why average people have never heard of personality subselves. Is that true of you? It was of me 19 years ago. Describe the four kinds of normal personality subcells and what distinguishes each type from the others. Question 12. Name at least five typical subcells in each of the three main types of personality subself. 13. Describe what a true self is at least and at least six unique skills that that subself has that other subselves do not have. Fourteen, describe at least six emotional clues that suggest a person's true self is guiding their personality. Fifteen, describe a, a false self and at least ten common behavioral traits that indicate that a false self is controlling someone's personality. In other words, that their true self is disabled. 16. Name six psychological wounds that are caused by early childhood trauma, meaning abandonment, abuse, and neglect. Six psychological wounds and describe the typical impacts of these wounds as well as ignorance. Complex question. 17. Explain how significant psychological wounds affect personal holistic health. That means you need to know what is holistic health. These questions, these next questions are about psychological wounds. Define excessive as opposed to normal, excessive shame. Where does it come from? What does being shame-based mean? And how can you reduce excessive shame to normal levels? Define the difference between self-confidence, self-love, self-respect, egotism, and narcissism. Do you agree that it's important that parents know the difference between all these concepts and terms so they can teach their kids? Um, question 20, define excessive guilt as opposed to normal guilt. Where does it come from and how can you reduce it to normal levels? 21, name five primal fears that we all have, all normal people. Five major fears. Where do excessive versus normal fears come from? And what can people do to reduce excessive fears to normal? Another complex question. 22. 
Describe the common types of reality distortion that people who were traumatized as children commonly experience. Five, at least five types. There are more than five. What causes them and how can you reduce them? 23. Describe trust. What is trust? What causes trust? And why do most psychologically wounded people have difficulty trusting well? They either trust too much or too little. Why is that? And what can they do about it? Explain what interpersonal bonding is. How would you tell a 14-year-old child, what is bonding? What does that mean? How does that happen? And explain why are some people unable to form genuine healthy bonds? In other words, they're unable to give or receive love. And what can be done to reduce that wound? We're almost done. Describe several of the differences between grown wounded children and grown nurtured children, and why this difference is important, especially to, the, to parents and people who are choosing a mate. 26. Describe how to assess for psychological wounds, whether you or someone else has significant psychological wounds from childhood trauma. How can you figure that out? How can you deduce that? 27. Explain the difference between minor psychological wounds and significant psychological wounds. There's an important difference. Do you know what it is? The last question is, describe PARPS work, which is a type of therapy Many people have never heard of it. Perhaps you have. It's also called inner family systems therapy. And if you can define it, describe how does it help to reduce psychological wounds from childhood trauma. That's the quiz. Notice how you're feeling right now. Notice what you're thinking. How many average people do you think could answer even half of these questions? You agree with my premise that ancestors, parents, and teachers are not teaching children the answer to these questions? Did your parents, could your parents answer these questions? How about your grandparents? <clears throat> if you'd like to learn more about personality formation childhood wounds, psychological wounds, and how to reduce them, here are two important resources. The first is one of two playlists of videos that relate to lesson one in my nonprofit educational website. Um, study these uh, videos. They will take several hours, but they will answer most of these questions. The second and more thorough way to find out the answers and expand your awareness is to actually go read the articles that comprise lesson one in my website. Here's the link. I hope you're pleasantly challenged by this video. I hope um, you're motivated to learn more, especially if you're a grandparent, a parent, a teacher, a daycare person, an au pair, anybody, foster parent, adoptive parent, step parent. I hope this motivates you to learn more for your sake and your kids' sake. Thanks for watching.